we die before Passover. Because God said on the Passover, we were going to have the perfect lamb. You weren't going to have to slaughter another lamb to spread no blood on the doorpost. We got the perfect lamb of Jesus yes. that died on Passover. Yes. Now, how many days after Passover was the first fruit? Anybody remember? Three days, Three days. Three days. after the Passover was the first fruit. Jesus died on Passover. Amen. Yes. Did he die on Passover? Yes. Amen. Three days later, first fruit. Yes. First, the same thing that they had been celebrating all throughout history. Yes. He's an on time God. Amen. He's an on time God. Yes. Three days later, he got up as the first fruit. Yes. The first fruit of everybody of the dead that would be raised yes. back. Amen. Oh, Amen. How yes. he got up. Of first fruit. They knew about first fruit because they had been celebrating it for years and years and years. Amen. Hallelujah. And then after that, after that, Pentecost came. Pentecost, the Holy Ghost came in on Pentecost. They were already ready to celebrate Pentecost because they always celebrated. Can you see how all the way down through the corridors of time, God has a plan. Amen. Jesus couldn't die before Passover that season. He could, they couldn't kill him. Did you read in your word how they say he slipped right through the crowd? They will be trying to kill him, but they couldn't kill him until Passover. There is nothing in your life, as long as you keep yourself in God, that can happen out of season. Nothing can happen out of season, amen? So when the Pentecost comes every year, I believe I plan to celebrate because the amen. Lord sent us the promise of the Holy Spirit. He's living down on the, if you have Jesus in your heart, the Holy Ghost lives on the inside amen. of you. Amen. And that's because of Pentecost. The law that Moses received Jesus took care of all of that, all of that. And the Holy Spirit came in to live on the east. Yes. That's why we celebrate Pentecost. That's why we celebrate because he's a good God. Amen. So when you think about all those timetables, we just say, who wouldn't serve a God like that? Who wouldn't serve a God like that? First fruits, Passover, Amen. Pentecost. It happened every year, but God made it plain. Yes. Jesus came. Hallelujah. Amen. Gave up his life on Passover. Yes. On first fruits, he got up. Thank you, Father. On Pentecost, Amen. he sent the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yes. Amen. That was good to me, y'all. Yes. Yes. I just had to get that out before we even went to the word, because that was good to me. So in your mind, if you're ever thinking I'm out of season or I'm out of time, trust God. Amen. Trust God. Amen. Trust God. Amen. He holds everything together in time. Yes, he does. Everything together yes, does. in time. Amen. Thank you, Lord. All right. Praise the Lord. Now we're going to move on into the lesson. Amen. I just wanted to share that. Because sometimes we celebrate stuff and we don't understand why we celebrate it. We don't understand what we're doing, but we need to have an understanding of the word. And I pray that the Holy Spirit would just pique your, your interest and you'll go back and study some more on it. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Amen. We're going to go into the promise. Amen. Who is the Holy Spirit? And this is part four. So we have been, um, our base scripture has been Luke 24 and 49. Um, so I believe we have that in there. Um, yes, amen. So it's, and now I will send Holy Spirit just as my father promised, but stay here in the city until the Holy Spirit comes and fills you with power, amen. So this is the day that we're celebrating that the Holy Spirit has come and filled us with power, amen. Last week, we talked about, we're not going back to those other two weeks. It's on Facebook, it's on YouTube. If you didn't get it, go out there and listen to it about the Holy Spirit. Last week, we talked mostly about the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit, amen. We all here? 
Amen. We talked about the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. There are three gifts that were revelation gifts. Amen. Three gifts of revelation gifts. I don't know if I said this last week, but there's a word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, and the discerning of spirits. Amen. Those are the three gifts that are revelation gifts. We have three gifts that are power gifts. There are gifts of healing. There are gifts of miracles. And there are gifts of faith. Amen. So that's six. Amen. So we have three gifts that are gifts of like speaking gifts. Amen. Gifts of prophecy. Amen. Gifts of tongues and interpretation of tongues. So those were basically the gifts that we talked about. That's in 1 Corinthians um, 12, 4 through 11. Because we want you to got your notebooks, write these scriptures down. Go back on your own time and read about it. Amen. Actually, the Holy Spirit allowed us to have a demonstration last week. We talked about, we gave a, de um, a definition of all the different gifts. We talked about how they can work together, how they flow. And then he came right in here and gave us a demonstration last week. As we, I was ministering, I was just thinking, what could I say? Um, word of knowledge is like thinking that somebody's hand is hurting. Didn't even know that our sister Tasha had been going through with her hand hurting, amen? Yes. The Holy Spirit called it right out. I didn't know, but that was a word of knowledge. The Holy Spirit called that right out. And we had prayer for her. Sister Iris reached over. We said there's gifts of healing flowing in here. She reached over. We prayed together as a group. I talked to her yesterday. Her hand hadn't hurt since. Her hand hadn't hurt since, amen? That's because the Holy Spirit wants us to see how he moves and how he functions and that it doesn't have to be a pastor or somebody that's standing up here that can reach over and say, I know that the anointing of God is living in me. If you need to be healed, let's pray and receive healing. Amen. Amen. The Holy Spirit wants us to know who he is because he wants to be able to flow, to be able to move. And it's not just inside of these walls. Because you may be in the grocery store, you may be at your job, and the Holy Spirit may say to you, that sister over there or that brother over there needs you to go over and just give them an encouraging word. And if you would do it, you might, you might say, I don't know what I'm going to say. A lot of times when I'm in here, when the Holy Ghost says, go pray for somebody, I don't know what word I'm going to say. But on the way over there, or once I get there, and I put my hands on it, then the Holy Spirit will start to flow, amen? He'll start to flow, amen? So you got to be obedient to take the step. Once you move, once he sees that you're willing to go, the Holy Spirit will give you what to say, amen? Amen, he'll give you what to say. This is just 101. Remember, we said that from the beginning. This is Holy Spirit 101, but we need it, amen? We need to know what the Holy Spirit is saying. We need to be confident in who we are in him. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So demonstrations of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We need to remember that it's the Holy Spirit that distributes. He activates and operates in the different gifts. Amen. But we have to have that desire. That's what we've been talking about. We have to have the desire for him to move in us. Amen. When you get up in the morning, Holy Spirit, what are we doing today? What are we doing today? What you need for me to do today? How can you help me be a blessing to somebody today? Amen. And it might be somebody right in your house. It might be somebody right in your house. It might be that person on the street that might try to cut you off. And you might need to look at them and say, God bless you, instead of saying some of that other stuff that try to come up in your mouth. You might be able to say, God bless you, amen. Thank you, Lord. And that may convict them in their heart. Convict them in their heart. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. The gifts, the gifts, the gifts flowing in Jesus' name. But last week, we left off, and we didn't get to the fruits of the Spirit. Because we don't want to go into, um, you know, Paul, he talked to the Corinthians because they got way over on this side of the gate with the gifts, but he, he, we need to know about the fruit of the Spirit too. Oh, yes. Because we said the Holy Spirit is loaded. 
He is loaded with what we need. Amen. So in Galatians, we're going to turn to Galatians 5. This is familiar scripture, but we're going to put our odds on it. Galatians 5, 22 through 23. I have two different versions. I'm going to read them both. I'm going to read from the Amplified um, first, I believe. I hope that's on there too. And um, But in the Amplified, it says, um, but the fruit of the spirit, and in parentheses, it says the result of his presence within us. The fruit of the spirit is the result of his presence that's, with, that's within us. Mm -hmm. When you put something together, when you add it up, you get a result. Amen. So, amen. The Holy Spirit, the fruit within us, it says, um, is love. It's love. Unselfish concern for others. It's joy, inner peace, patience, not the ability to wait, but how we act while we're waiting. Woo! Right. Woo! Right. Woo! Oh, my. Oh, my. That's what it said in the Bible. It said, mm, not the ability to wait, but how you wait. How you wait. I'm just so tired of waiting. Oh, my, my, my. It's how you wait. What's your attitude while you're waiting? Amen. Hallelujah. What's our attitude? We got to check it while we're waiting. Amen. Kindness. Kindness. Goodness. Faithfulness. Gentleness. Self-control. Against such things, there is no law. A lot of times we want all the gifts to flow. But these things right here, this stuff right here, this is that stuff that we have to develop on the inside of us. So what happens is the fruit is inside of us, deposited in us, but it's in seed form. And we have to develop. The Holy Spirit helps us, but we have a place in that with the development of that fruit. We're going to go to Galatians 5.23, hand with, um, in the patch. I think that's on there next. Okay, so I got it here. I'll start reading it while she's, uh, there we go. It says, but the fruit produced by Holy Spirit within you is divine love in all of its varied expressions. So there's a fruit, and it says, Fruit. It doesn't say fruits. It says fruit. There's a fruit that's put down in you, in all of us, and it has varied expressions. It is joy that overflows, peace that subdues, patience that endures, kindness in action. What about that? What about kindness that's in action? You say, oh, I'm kind. Mm. But is it in act? Amen. In action. Amen. A life full of virtue, which is goodness. Faith. Faith. Faith that prevails. Gentleness of heart and strength of spirit, which is self-control. So never set the law above these qualities, for they are meant to be limited. Amen. That's the fruit the fruit of the spirit. And you know, when um, this fruit is put in us, like I said, it's in seed form. But you know, the only way that we're going to grow these things and develop these things is like a muscle. When there's times that you don't want to be lovely, you're going to have to be lovely. When there's times that you don't want to be joyful, you're going to have to muster up some joy. Amen. Amen. Muster up some joy, amen. When there's things going around on around you and there's no peace like it is going on all around us today, we have to choose to amen. walk in peace, amen. We talk about patience that endures, kindness and actions, being good. What about just being good? Yeah. What about just being good, amen? Faith that prevails, not giving up, not quitting. Gentleness of heart and self-control. Praise Amen. the Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. So, amen. So, thank you. The Holy Spirit says, faith that endures. 
Amen. Just stay in faith. Just stay in faith. Amen. Just stay in faith. Mm. Just stay in faith. Hallelujah. Amen. Just stay in faith. Amen. Thank you, Lord. He's with you. He's Amen. for you. And he loves you. Amen. Stay in faith. Amen. Don't be moved by what you see or what you hear. Stay in faith. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. It doesn't matter what you hear in your ear. What you hear in your ear. Right. Right. Hallelujah. Just stay in faith. Amen. Stay in faith. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. See, that's how the spirit flows. He'll just give you a word for somebody. And you can just, it might just be one word. It might just be one or two words. But when you speak it out and the Holy Spirit is in it, it will minister. It will touch your heart. It will bring life. Amen. It will bring a blessed assurance. Yes. Hallelujah. It will bring stability. That's good. It will hold you up in a place where you may feel broken down. Amen. Thank you, Father. Don't quench the spirit. Amen. Don't yes. quench the spirit. When you hear him speaking to you, say, yes, I hear you. Yes. And I will. I will do what you tell me to do. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. God, we praise you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So there's nine gifts and there's nine fruit that we have in the body. And what I had in my mind, and I wish I was a really good drawer, or I could have, I guess I could have found a picture, but it was like a scale and there's a balance. There's a balance. There's gifts of the spirit and there's a fruit of the spirit. And we need them both. And we need them to work together. Amen. Amen. To work together. You know, um, it, this wasn't in my notes, but I've just heard it a couple of times. And I'll just show you, you know, when they made those uh, priestly garments um, back in the Bible days, I don't know if you guys have read it, but when they made around the hem of those garments, they would put like a bell and a pomegranate, right? A bell and a pomegranate. They would alternate a bell and a pomegranate, a bell and a pomegranate. Amen. And those bells would be ringing as they walk, you know? But if the bell was beside a bell, it would be clanging. Right. So they put the bell beside the fruit. Y'all look at God. Y'all look at God. Y'all just, they put the bell beside the fruit around that hymn. So it wouldn't make no clanging sound, no sound like that. It would be just right. Yes. Because you need the gifts and you need the fruit. You need them both. Y'all go back in there and read about that. Read about when they made those garments and those priests and how they had those pomegranates and they had those bells around that hymn. They didn't put them all together. God is so strategic. Even back in the Old Testament, he was making a way for the things that was in the New Testament. Y'all read about that. That's some good stuff. Amen. That is some good stuff. Praise the Lord. Mm -mm. When you study the Bible, when you study it, God will give you more. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. So, you know, a lot of people say that it's the um, the gifts of the spirit, especially speaking in tongues. That is the, what do they call it? The evidence. That's what they say it is. But, you know, as we've been growing and learning, we realize that the evidence is more this stuff. Yes. Because when you're speaking in tongues, a lot of people can't understand. Most people can't understand it. But when you walking around, walking in love, walking in peace, being full of joy, being gentle, having self-control when everything else is going on, that's when the evidence is there's something different about you. When you, if you just start walking through your building, speaking in tongues, people might look at you like, hmm, there really is something different about you. But if you walking around being nice to people that's mean and nasty, if you're walking around and being patient when everything is going on around you, they're watching you. And they start saying, mm, there's something different about you. What is that? And you can say, it's the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Amen. It's the Holy Ghost that's on the inside of me. So this is the stuff. 
That's the evidence Amen. that you have the Holy Ghost living on the inside of you. And if you find yourself in a place that you're getting all disturbed and aggravated in your soul, in your soul area, why don't you just sit down and go spend some time with the Holy Ghost? Amen. Amen. Spend some time. I'm just trying to help us all. Amen. We all need some help, amen? amen. And sometimes we get a little rowdy on the inside. Sometimes we get, you know, we know when we're getting a little ugly. Yes, on, yes. On the, and it's showing up on the outside. That's because there's not enough on the inside going on. We haven't yes, got Lord. enough feeling on the inside from the Holy Ghost, amen? amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I just want you to be fruitful. I just want amen. you to be filled. Amen. Because we need the Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So we can just check our love walk. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So we're going to roll to 1 Corinthians 13, 1 and 2. Because we want to make sure as we're talking about these gifts and, and the load of the, the package that the Holy Spirit has for us. It says in here, this is Paul talking. It says, if I speak in tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong. Y'all remember the gong show? Y'all yeah. too young. The gong show. You know, they would take that thing and they would go bong. Yep. If, it's, if they were bad, if they didn't, couldn't sing well, and they were dancing and it looked bad, they would hit the gong. Oh, that, I'm sorry. Anyway, I digress a little bit. And so, or a clanging symbol. If I have the gift of prophecy, and we should all desire that gift, amen, we talked about it last year, last year, last week, we should all desire the gift of prophecy, and I can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if there, and if I have faith that can move the mountains, we want faith that can move mountains, right? If I have all of that and I don't have any love, I'm nothing. I'm nothing. Amen? I'm nothing without the fruit. You know, the fruit, is, it's not plural, the fruit is love, amen? amen? And all of that other stuff comes from love. So if you have all of that, prophesying, speaking in tongues, jumping over chairs, all that kind of stuff, and you walk around mean as a snap, it's going to profit you nothing, amen? You don't have no peace in your heart when you lay down by yourself. So you can do a whole lot of things when you're around people. But when you lay down by yourself, that's when you know what's really on the inside of you, amen? That's right. Because your soul start talking to you when you land. Then maybe that's just me. Maybe that's just me. Your soul start talking to you. Yes. Amen? Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Pray. I'm just trying to tell you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So, you know, um, in, in, I wrote this down. In Matthew 21 and Mark 11, you don't have to go there. But, you know, that's the story. That's the event of the fig tree. And, you know, Jesus cursed that fig tree. Why did he curse that fig tree? It didn't have no fruit, did it? It didn't have no fruit. It had leaves. And if you study about the fig tree, when it has leaves, it's supposed to have fruit. When the leaves come, there's supposed to be fruit on there. But when Jesus looked at that fig tree, there was no fruit. And it was the season for it to be fruitful. Right. Do we have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of us? Yes, it's the season for us to be fruitful. Yes, it's the season for us to be fruitful. Amen. There should be some fruit hanging on us when somebody is hungry. Amen. There's a lot of hungry people out here. When somebody is hungry, they should be able to come over to us and find some fruit. Amen. Amen. So he cursed that fig tree. I told you that address, Matthew 21, Mark 11. I don't ever want you to leave here, not know where to go to find it. So be fruitful. Amen. And John 15 and 16, we coming on through John 16, 15 and 16. It says, you did not choose me, but I chose you. I didn't only choose you, but I appointed you. Amen. I appointed you. I chose you and I appointed you. Every single one of us has been appointed. Yeah. Chosen and appointed so that you would go. Amen. That you would go. 
and bear fruit. Fruit that will last. That's right. That's not this. That's right where carpos is. That's what carpos means, fruitful. That's where carpos, that's where what you're sitting in right now, carpos, it comes from. That scripture, amen? Fruitful, amen? Thank you, Lord. Appointed to be fruitful. He said to go and be fruitful. Amen. Go and be fruitful. And there will be fruit that remains, amen? I want you to understand, We, I love the gifts. I love the flow of the spirit. I absolutely love to be in a place where the Holy Spirit is moving and flowing. But we got to have some fruit, amen? We got to have some fruit. We don't want to be a clanging cell, a gong, making a whole lot of noise, and nothing effective happening, amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. So I want you to be fruitful. And because you're in this house, amen. and this house is called fruitful. We have to have fruit, amen? amen? That's what God says. We have to have fruit. Joyce Meyer said that, that um, when I was reading in her Bible, she talked about in Galatians, she said that love is one book in, self-control is the other book in. That's good. And all the other ones stand up because those two are the book in. So if you walk in love and you have self-control, Peace shouldn't be a problem. Wow. If you walk in love and you have self-control, patience shouldn't be a problem. Gentleness shouldn't be a problem. Goodness shouldn't be a problem. Faithfulness shouldn't be a problem. Joy shouldn't be a problem. Amen? Because she got the bookie holding it together. I love that when she said that. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're going to, we have the gifts flowing. We have the fruit of the spirit. And this last thing right here, because I'm going to turn it back over to a pastor after this, y'all. Praise the Lord. Um, but this last thing that the Holy Spirit has just been really putting on my heart that I want to make sure that at least you are curious about if you don't have it yet. Amen. And that is, it's the gift that we have, the benefit that we have of having a prayer language. That is a vital part of who we are. Amen. Amen. And so I just want to share about it because let me tell you, I'm going to jump a little bit ahead of myself. When I was, it was back in the early 1990s. Ooh, that was a long time ago, before this little guy was born. I, my sister, my other sister, went to a church in um, Chesapeake, Virginia, and we visited her. Had never heard people speaking in tongues before in my life. My friend Elaine knows how much I went through with, um, uh, um, but when I went to church with her and I heard people flowing and speaking in tongues at the Rock Church, at the Rock Church, it opened up something on the inside of me. And I wanted, I wanted more of what the church I went to at the time, I nothing against it. I, you need to grow and learn, but they didn't, they didn't have the gifts of the spirit flowing. Amen. I didn't have anybody that I could ask. As a matter of fact, there was an interim pastor there at that time, and he had the gifts. But he couldn't share it because they had them in bondage. Because he was an interim pastor, he said, I met with him. I was hungry. I was hungry. I met with him. I called a meeting with him. And he said, I can't tell you about it. But keep praying. He said, because I'm an interim here. And they don't believe in that here. Uh -huh. So I can't tell you about it. But you keep studying. Amen. I'm talking about a prayer language. You know, last week we talked about that there's a gift of speaking in tongues. We talked about it. Because came up here and she spoke in tongues. You need interpretation, amen? But there's a prayer language of speaking in tongues. Right, right. We talked about that last week, amen? Mm -hmm. And everybody, I believe, Paul says, we're going to look in the word. I'll finish my testimony in a little bit. But in 14, 1 Corinthians 14, 5, Paul says that he wished that we all spoke in tongues. 
but he wished that more than that, that we prophesied. We talked about that last week. Everybody should have a desire to prophesy. Why? Let's look at 1 Corinthians 14 and 4. 1 Corinthians 14, 4 says, a person who speaks in tongues is strengthened personally. But one who speaks a word of prophecy strengthens the whole entire church. So that's why Paul said everybody should desire to prophesy, but everybody should also speak in tongues. Amen. Prophecy edifies the whole church. Speaking in tongues in your prayer language edifies you. Amen. It edifies you. It's important. Amen. In Jude 20, because you know Jude just has one chapter. So Jude 20, it says, but you, dear friends, must build yourself up in your most holy faith. Pray in the power of the Holy Spirit. So it builds you up when you have a prayer language. Amen. Amen. I'm just teaching. I just want you to be thirsty. I just want you to be thirsty. Amen. When I went to Rock Church, it left a thirst in me. Amen. And all these years later, 30 years later, I'm still teaching about and hungry for the Holy Spirit. Amen. For the Holy Spirit. Amen. I got books. You know what? I bought some. Because y'all might not, you know, be thinking about today. I bought some these are the same little books that I got because I didn't know anybody that would talk to me about receiving the gifts of speaking in tongues. Yes. I didn't know anybody to help me. We used to have bookstores back in those days. Y'all remember when you could go to the Bible bookstore? Yes. You could go to the Bible bookstore and buy books on things. that wasn't no Amazon back in that day. But they had books about how to receive the gifts of uh, the evidence. They said evidence. It's a benefit, amen, of the Holy Spirit. I bought all the books I could find. And I would sit and I would read those books. And I would pray and ask God to help me. Help me because I wanted to be able to flow. I believe that when you have your prayer language, it opens the doors to other gifts to be able to flow. I believe that. I believe that. It opens the door. And I'm telling you, there will be nights. My husband was working nights. I put... um, um my oldest son and my, my oldest daughter, I put them in, in bed and I would just sit there in the presence of the Lord and just pray. And you know, one, day, one night, y'all, one night I was sitting in that room. I had been reading and soaking it up and I was sitting there praying. And all of a sudden there was a boy and a girl. And I just, I just felt the unction to speak. And as I was speaking, it just started bubbling out of me. Oh, I was running around the house. I was like, I got it, Lord. I got it, Lord. Hallelujah. Nobody wasn't there to lay hands on me. Nobody, nobody could help me. You can ask me like, she and my friend, the Lord. I used to say to them all the time, they would say, why are you so stuck on that thing about Speaking in tongues, I almost thought we were going to lose our friendship because I used to go over and over and over with them about we need to get this speaking in tongues so we can be open to the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 I just want you to be thirsty, y'all. If you already have it, speak in it as much as you can. Amen. If you don't have it already, I want you to be curious enough to ask somebody. We can pray for you today. Amen. We got some people in here that can pray today and Amen. help you. Not that we give you the Holy Spirit to be able to, with the benefits of speaking in tongues, but the Holy Spirit, if you are saved and he's already inside of you, yeah. then yeah. he is ready when you ask him to flow out of you in a way that you can speak. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Okay. I have a couple of things. Um, that is why. So I think I have a list up there. Yes. When you speak in tongues and you have your prayer language, it reminds you that you have the Holy Spirit. 
You know it already, but it reminds you when you're going through a struggle. Sometimes I can be at work and I can just go, and I'm just telling you, I'm telling it builds me up. It helps me, amen. It helps, reminds me that I'm not by myself. It reminds me that I got the Holy Spirit living on the inside of me. Then it builds us up and it strengthens us. I've told you scripture already to back that up. It's not just me talking. I've showed you scripture to back it up. And then it makes you speaking directly to God. Speaking directly to God. And then you're praying by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is praying through you. And then you're praying the will of God. You're praying the will of God, amen? Hallelujah, so I'm giving you those reasons. And then we're gonna go to 1 Corinthians 14 and two. I just wanna prove what I'm saying, amen? It says, for if you have the ability to speak in tongues, you will be talking only to God. That's what I just said. Since people won't be able to understand you, you will be speaking by the power of the spirit, but it will all be mysterious. Amen. Amen. But it will all be mysterious. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I'm telling you on the day of Pentecost, the day that we celebrate the Pentecost, the Lord orchestrated all these lessons so that we will be right here today, right here today. And that if you have a desire that you want to be filled and you, the Holy Spirit is in you, but if you want to overflow, Amen. if you want to overflow, and I know some of you already have it, and I know you be whispering around, praying in the spirit. I know you do. Mm -hmm. I, I know you do. Praise the Lord. But I'm just telling you, there's books up here. If you want one, if you're just not sure and you want to read, there's plenty of stuff online. If you want to come up and pray. But I just, I don't know. As I was finishing up my study in this morning, the Holy Spirit just kept putting Tasha's name on my mind. And I just believe, I don't know how she received the gift of the Holy Spirit. I don't know what she thinks that it does for her. I just know the Holy Ghost says she has something to say. So I sent her a message and I said, you coming to church today? Tell her if I got your phone number. I said, are you coming? I said, are you coming to church today? And she said, yes, ma'am. <laughs> and I said, we're going to be teaching about receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Spirit with the ev with not evidence, the benefits. We get so wrong with what people what we have put in and speaking in tongues. I said, I believe the Holy Spirit saying that you got something. So I just want you to just say whatever he has for you to say. Amen. Amen. Just just do that. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So um mm, the benefits of, of the Holy Spirit. When I moved to Raleigh about 20 years ago, again, I was, you know, coming from a church and um, kind of going to church, kind of not going to church. And, but I knew I needed more because I had some big things in front of me. So there was more. So I started going to church with Pastor Lisa, Pastor Jonathan and Durham. And so I was curious again, I was curious too. And I, and I knew there was more, I knew God had more. And more importantly is that I knew I needed some things and I knew in the natural, I didn't know how to get there. I didn't know what to do. I, you know, we had a daughter to take care of and there was some things that were missing on the inside. And so, you know, I went to church one Sunday and, and the pastor asked, he goes, you've never been filled. Do you want to come and get filled? And, and it was funny because I looked at Aunt Lisa and she was just kind of like, well, that's you. <laughs> and I was like, and I had Sedasia with me. I, you know, I, I'll never forget it. And she goes, as gosh, these guys have sown so many seeds. And they said, just give us Sedasia. And they took us in a small room. And I, and I have to be honest with you. I kind of thought, well, this is kind of real, but I'm not sure. 
Because I think, you know, people can make themselves do some things. And so let's just be real about it. I mean, because, you know, I think we've all sat in church and done that. I'm like, oh, I, I don't know about all this. Holy, I, I know about it, but I'm not sure. Aunt Lisa just kept telling me. There are benefits. There are benefits. You need it. You need that power. You need to understand what's happening because the Holy Spirit won't leave you ignorant, you see. Because if you get that, you have a, you have a benefit that other people don't have. And I was like, okay, Aunt Lisa, I go up in that room and um, me being me. And I said, what do you mean? You're going you're gonna to pray for me. And then my, my mouth is just going to open and, and my tongue is just going to speak in other tongues. What, what do you mean? Because my, in my mind, I'm like, I don't speak another language. I know enough Spanish and French to be dangerous. What do you just mean to tell me that it's just going to just roll out? And he said, yes. And, but he said something more important to me. He said, in your mind, in your mind, you think you can do so much. He goes, this is not about your mind. This is about God and faith and trusting that he has that for you. He has that gift for you. He said, I want you to do something for me. And I'm a thinker. He said, turn your mind off. And I looked at him as only I can do and go, how do you turn your mind off? He said, I want you to stop thinking about the how and trust God. And I said, okay, I'm going to do that. So I said, I said, as a matter of fact, I said, give me a second. Cause I'm like, turn my mind off. I'm in here with people I don't know. And you're praying for me and all of these things. But I did that. I trusted God. I didn't know so much trust him. And I remember looking up and said, God, if this is for me. I'm open today. And I, honest to goodness, I raised my hands and he began to pray and I opened my mouth and it was like a whale that was released on the inside of me. And you know what? It felt like it had been waiting to be released. You know how, when you see a pipe that burst and um, when the, actually the ice is there and then the pipe burst and then the water and everything comes out. It was like that. It was like, whoosh. It came up and so much so that when I came out, Aunt Lisa said to me, she said, did you get it? And I was like, yeah. And so I got in the car and I was like, oh my God, you know, like this is real. It wasn't anything that I had to make up. It was what was already there and it was natural. It was like speaking. And so over the next few weeks, because what I would do is I would wake up in the middle of the night and be like, and I'm like, okay, I still got it. I still got it. You know, I can still speak in the language. So I still had, it. but what I began to notice was my prayer life changed. Um, my vision changed. I began to know things. I began to see things. And I don't want you guys to think, oh God, you get the Holy Spirit. Your Holy Spirit comes and you speak in tongues and then you just know things. But no, when you mix the word with faith, and you begin to pray in the spirit, just like it says, he will show you things to come. And there are things right here that you don't even know. Like you don't even know some things that God wants to show you. A, a, you know, like, and I hear people say things like, well, he'll tell you which way to turn or he'll tell you which way to go. The Holy Spirit is so faithful. Holy Spirit is so faithful that as you're praying in your car, you know, you're praying in the morning. Okay, Holy Spirit, what, what do you wear to work? And I give you, a, this is like a silly example. Last year, got ready for school on the first day of school. I was praying that morning because, you know, first day of school, I like to have me a good outfit to wear and the right shoes. And I was praying that morning. You know, he shut out. I'm you so good. Cool my say I'm in my closet. I'm praying. I'm praying. And I picked out a pair of gold shoes. And I said, I want to wear these shoes. I put the shoes on my feet. I walked out of my room and I heard Holy Spirit say, those shoes are going to tear up. You better get another pair. You know what? At first I overrode that. I was like, oh, my shoes are not going to tear up. Get in my car. This is what I'm telling you guys. I got in my car and Holy Spirit said, those shoes are going to tear up. You better get another pair. I was like, okay, God, I ran back in the house and I got another pair of shoes. I got in my building, my assistant principal and I, we always do our first, you know, first day of picture of school picture. I'm walking back in my office and my shoe said clip. And I looked down, <laughs> I said, Lord, you told me my shoe was going to break today. But guess what? 
he had already provided a way because I was obedient. I had another pair of shoes that I could go put on, but had I not listened, I would have been at work, not another pair of shoes there, having to drive all the way back. It's just critical. Amen. It's just like breathing. It's just critical. It, it's just like breathing. You need it. You need it. If you had cancer, you wouldn't go a day without taking your chemo if that's what they told you you needed. So guess what? We need Holy Spirit and we need him all the time. He, we need him all the time. And I don't care how young or how old you are. It's for all of us. It is for all of us. So I just believe that this message is timely. And in the day and hour that we're living in now, if we ever needed to have the inside scoop, yeah, because Holy Spirit can give you that, he'll give you the inside scoop. If you ever needed the inside scoop, now is the time. So I encourage you, stay open, keep your heart open. And if you want to receive, it's here for the receiving. Amen. I wish you had something to say. The Holy Spirit don't lie. Amen. I'm telling you, I was reading my notes and she kept coming up and I got her name on there and I typed out a text. I said, mm, I don't know what I'm. Mm. She said, nope, sin. And so anyway, praise the Lord. So I'm just going to open it up. I'm going to open up anybody. Is there anybody here that wants us to agree with you today? Because we can't give you anything. If you, first of all, don't have Jesus in your heart, we want to open that door first because you can't flow with the gifts flowing through you until you have Jesus in your heart because then we know he brings the Holy Spirit in. Yes. The Holy Spirit comes in and then all the gifts. It's a package deal, amen? It's like if I had some of those boxes that you have a big box and a little box and another box and another yeah. box, that's what it is when you have the Holy Spirit. There's gifts inside of the gift. Amen. There's gifts inside of the gift. So it's up to you. you. You can come up here and we can pray for you. You can come out the service and we can pray for you. I got some people in here. I know if it's more than one or two, I know that they can help me pray for you. I know that people have received the, the gifts before. Amen. So, but you can come up here. If you want to lie, and you say, I'm not there, but I'm curious. If you just slip, send us an email, I'll send you one of those little books. I'll pray with you. We'll pray with you. We be, you can pray with yourself because Amen. I didn't have anybody with me. Amen. Amen. I didn't have anybody that knew what, how to help me. Amen. I didn't even know how. I was like, Lord, I need some help. But you know what? That testimony was for today. Amen. That testimony is for somebody that says, I ain't getting up going in there in front, okay. up there in front of people. And then um, I go back and sit down and don't feel like I have anything. But the, but the Holy Spirit is saying, okay, I'll meet you where you are. Because you need me. Amen. You need me. I am necessary. Amen. You need a prayer language. I'm telling you, I am, look, if I had candy or fish, and I know that you needed some, you were hungry, and I kept it all to myself and I didn't tell you about it. That's selfish. That's selfish. So, what I'm telling you is back in the early 90s, before this little one was even born, the Holy Spirit, the baptism, the evidence of speaking in tongues. Hallelujah. In my bedroom, while my husband's at work and my children was asleep, he's so good. He's like, she, she need to just settle down, be right by her sister, you know, just be me and her. Amen. I don't know what your experience was with receiving. Maybe somebody laid hands on you and prayed for you. Whatever it is, don't go without it. Amen. It's criminal. I love that. When you're reading the Bible and the Holy Spirit is flowing, you will get nuggets of truth from the word that you never would have seen before. Mm -hmm. It's the inside story. I just want you to be thirsty. Mm -hmm. There's water back there on that table, but I'm telling you, this living water that's on the inside yeah. of us, it is so much better. Amen. So much better.
Amen. So, okay. I'm just opening it up. I'm going to stay here just for a few minutes. And if anybody wants to come, anybody want to come? Um, 